Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. And today we're just doing a quick video on how you join a QNAP NAS uh, to a Windows Active Directory domain. Uh, so here I've got a Windows Server 2019. It's a virtual machine I've got set up and I've just created a quick domain on it called uh, QNAP UK. Um, and this is what we're going to be joining with the NAS. So the NAS I'm going to use today is the TS251D. Um, one of the first things I'll show you is this is not in a domain at the moment. If I go to users, we can see the only user I've got on there is the admin user. And even if I change the drop down at the top right from local users to domain users, it is completely empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the domain security options. So if you are in the full control panel, uh, that's under the privilege option. So we'll go to domain security and we're going to choose the middle option here, which is the AD authentication or active directory authentication. And there's a quick configuration wizard. We'll follow through with that one. Um, so this is what it's going to do, uh, configure the DNS, uh, synchronize the time of the NAS with the domain controller and then join the NAS to the AD uh, Active Directory domain. So we'll click next. So here in my case all I have to do is type in QNAP UK. Uh, in my case I called it local domain. Um, so here it wants to know the uh, DHCP address of, uh, sorry, the DNS address of the Windows Server itself. So I've typed that. Um, in most cases, you'll leave the top box ticked uh, for obtain a DNS server by the DHCP server. In my case, my Windows domain is just a test lab thing. It's not part of my DHCP server, so I'm not ticking that. I've typed it in uh, manually there. So we're going to click next. <coughs> So now it's found the domain, so here we can see it there. So that matches the uh, the name of the domain that we had earlier, so the win um, ASEC UPAF102. Um, so that matches the, uh, the domain that I'm going to use. So we'll click on that one and we'll click the plus symbol. So down here it wants the uh, username and password uh, for the domain. So I'm going to type in the administrator password there and I'm going to click join. So this process will take a couple of minutes. It's going to go off. Uh, talk to the server, do a bit of synchronizing, changing DNS settings, just doing a couple of things. So we'll just wait for that to finish before we continue. Okay, so now we've joined. Um, if you do have organizational units, you can choose to limit the users to only be able to log on from specific organizational units. I'm just going to leave that for no for now. Um, click next, and it's saying that we have now joined the domain successfully. So I'm just going to click finish on that one. Um, so now it's showing that there's the information. I'm already connected to the uh, the local domain here. Uh, so now if I was to go back to the users option, still in the local users section at the top right, we still only have the admin account. Uh, but if I go to the drop down now and go to domain users, we should see um, a few extra users that we've got created. So I just created one, a little demo account for myself, uh, for my colleague Tam and uh, my other colleague Tom. Uh, and you see the descriptions that we've got next to us as well. So now we can use um, these accounts to assign um, permissions to different shares. So if I wanted to edit the shared folder permission, um, I can say I want to give them um, access to a specific folder, let's say, so the movies folder there. Um, so you can choose to give access to the domain users to some existing shares that you do have on the NAS. Okay, hopefully that was helpful um, for anybody that was having trouble setting it up to an Active Directory domain. Uh, normally it would be the IT manager's job that they're probably not going to give out the, uh, the administrator username and password, so they would probably do it and they'd probably be quite able to go through those settings. Uh, but if there is ever a situation where you've got to do it yourself, uh, using the Quick Wizard in most cases um, is the easiest way to do it. Very simple setup, really just needs the domain name, the username and password of that domain, and then you can connect. Okay, thanks a lot.